The Turner 300 gearbox has a slightly leaky output seal which dribbles down the back and eventually drops off onto the ground. Uh, being a British vehicle it's probably quite acceptable but since I'm here and I don't have a drive shaft in at the moment or any drive shaft at all for the whole length thought I'd have a look at the seal in it. So I'll pull it apart and we'll have a look. So this is a T5A305 Turner gearbox. It's a 5 speed direct drive on 4th, sorry 5th. Cruising speed Flat tack at 3,200 RPM is 98 kilometres an hour. So anyway, it will set up and pull the flange off the back of the gearbox. It's held in place with this bolt and we've got a locking plate on it. That has a little pin or a little opening in the back of it. The flange. So we have to bend back this little Fold it up metal tab here and we should be able to wind it off. First up we'll release this locking tab using a little chisel. Flatten it out with this block without shocking the gearbox too much. There we go, nice and flat there. Now, what size socket do we have on the back here? That's a three quarter of an inch. Now we're going to do this. Which way does it go? Probably doesn't matter. I don't know, we'll see. So this is actually in first gear. And we'll give our socket set here a wallet with a rubber mallet and see if we can undo it. Yep, it's not done it that tight at all. So we'll just calibrate how tight that was. Not very at all, just enough to retain it. So, what have we got here? Just a bolt, locking tab, which has a little bit that goes into the drilled hole in the back of the flange, and a big washer. Put that somewhere safe. Okay, let's slide this off. Yes, there is, there is a seal in there. And I'm just having a look at how much wear is on here. None. None whatsoever. So that's good. I'll put that down there. And I'll spin the camera around and let you have a look at what's in there. Okay, so this is the back. You can see the pinion on the spline, and there is a seal in there. So that is the outside of the metal part of the seal, and that is the rubber seal just in there. So the good news is, I've had a look at the seals online shop in town here. It looks like I'm about to get a seal for it. Um, so I'm going to pull this one out and get a final outside diameter measurement. Um, I was wondering why it wasn't working, but if you listen very carefully, if I push on the seal, it makes a crunching noise. 
it because it's so it's just completely dried out and gone hard so the seal isn't sealing anymore it's just a hard bit of plastic so we'll try and get the seal out without making too much of a mess all right where's my hammer Drive shaft hoops in the way. I might have to take that off. I don't want to damage the housing. Okay, got it. Sometimes you got to fix a simple thing, and if you get it wrong, you can cast it. Done. It's an interesting old seal, that one. Anyway, hopefully we've got some new fandangled seal that will take its place. So the seal's out. And if you look in the back of the output shaft here, you can see the speedo, which comes out the side here. Now this, amazing little bit of engineering, look at that. That's what does the speedo. Turns a little speedo gear there, and in the back you can see the big output bearing so I'll put that back in so that is pushed up against the flange and that's what stops it from or makes it spin hold it onto the shaft so we've got the flange out now I've cleaned it up in the garage given a quick lick of paint and I've emerged out there's a little bit of rust or pitting on it because when our new seal goes in I'm not sure where that seal will land because this one's quite a thick seal and I may not get one as thick which means the lip will finish closer to this edge so it could run on one, on some of the rusty bits so I've cleaned all that up this is about a half inch seal thickness or width quite thick um, the flange on the outside of this flange on the gearbox is two inches 50.8 millimeters and the housing that it goes into is 2.75 or 69.85 millimeters. Uh, we'll be running about 3,300 RPM and I'll give that to the guys. Single lips okay, it's not going to be that dusty. So I'll give that information to the guys tomorrow and they'll find me a suitable seal. Anyway, we'll get back to you with that. We have our seal. We picked it up today, $10. Fits on there nicely. So We'll go out and pop it in its rightful place, and we're done. I forgot to say this is actually a twin lip seal where the other one was a single, so we've got this dust seal on the front. And in the service manuals for these seals, it actually states to put a bit of grease inside the between the first and the second lip, and then they reckon that stops corrosion in that part of the shaft, which I don't think we'll have too many problems in the old Bedford because it has enough grease flying around the place anyway. So there we go, got a bit of grease in there. We'll go bash it into the housing. Alright, let's put the seal in. That's the seal. Just rest that on the edge of there, just push it a little bit. Just start that. Then I'll drift it in using this block here. We'll tap on it and work our way in with it. 
I could use a big socket, but we'll see how this goes. So I'm just hammering that flat with the outside edge. So it's flush all the way around. Got enough of this cowboy. All right, we'll stick the um, flange in now. So we have a nice clean flange here, we'll paint it up. No more leaky oil. So we've got our locking washer and bolt. That's about how tight it was. Not that tight. Don't need to kill it completely. Okay. Now we'll knock over this edge over here. Lift up the locking tab. and drift it into place using the block. Done. So that's not going to come undone. And that's that oil leak fixed. Excellent. Now, so next question. It's leaking out the front. So, done the back, now I'm contemplating pulling out the whole gearbox and doing the front one. So I'll have a wee think about that. Anyway, that's the back flange done. Thanks for watching.